Welcome to Roofing Uncovered, the podcast where we talk about roofs without going over your head. I'm your host, Dustin Brooks, and we are here to uncover everything commercial and industrial roofing. We'll cut through the jargon, we'll get to the good stuff, safety, sustainability, innovation, whatever shaping our industry's future. Whether you're an architect, business owner, facility manager, or roofing contractor, this will be packed with insights, packed with knowledge to help you and your business. Let's get started. Today's episode, silicone roof coatings. Why they're popular, what the industry really isn't telling you, and why they may be more dangerous than helpful. Today's uh, key themes we're gonna hit on are safety, performance, repair limitations, environmental limitations, environmental impact, and industry misconceptions. Now, this might be a hot take. Silicone is likely considered the most popular roof coating in the American roofing, uh, commercial and flat and low slope roofing industry. Why is silicone so popular? We're gonna dive into that. There's obviously a reason why manufacturers are selling it, why contractors are installing it, and why clients are choosing it. And we will dive into all of that. So first, let's talk about various aspects of silicone. Now, I'm just gonna break it down real simple and, and, and state here is why I believe silicone is the most popular roof coating currently on the market. For a long time, coatings uh, have been used to restore and look at other podcast episodes to talk about, you know, look at the difference, what I mean when I say restore versus recover, membrane versus coating. Uh, acrylic coatings have been around for decades and decades of time to restore and provide UV protection and act as that sunscreen over existing roofs. Now, the one fallacy and downside to acrylics are that they are highly permeable. They, are, uh, they have a high degree of water absorption. So they're kind of like a sponge when they're under standing or ponding water. They soak up a lot of moisture. Silicone, on the flip side, is very hydrophobic. It does not like water. It has a very, very, very low water absorption uh, and moisture uptake rate. Though, to note, silicone is still highly permeable. It will still allow vapor transmission. It will still allow moisture to go through it. Um, so silicone started becoming popular because acrylic coatings would start to wrinkle up and they would, uh, quote unquote, fail in ponding water. Because they had so much water absorption uptake, and the water would get underneath and it would wrinkle up and it would become brittle and really messy. And, and acrylic is kind of known industry-wide to not hold up to ponding water. Therefore, come to the scene silicone. Silicone is great because it's so hydrophobic. It repels water, it beads up. So we'll use silicone instead because it holds up to ponding water. That's really why silicone became popular. So now you could restore an existing roof and instead of using acrylic, you can use silicone, similar thickness, thin, 20 mils, 30 mils, 40 mils tops. No, not much thicker than a sheet of paper. So you still get that cost advantage of not tearing the roof off, extending the life of the existing roof, but now you had a coating in a product that wouldn't fail and wrinkle up under ponding water. That was really why silicone came onto the scene. Another advantage of silicone is that oftentimes when you roll it on, which is what most people do, because spraying it's really messy, it's stringy and it, flings and the overspray is a mess. So most people roll it and a lot of times they can roll it in one coat. Acrylic is always two coats minimum. So now you could roll on a coating in one coat, less labor cost. It's bright white when it's new and it holds up to ponding water. So it's still a cost effective option. And a lot of people see silicone, they have the samples, they're like, oh, this is more rubbery. This is different than paint. And it's mismarketed as a membrane. Now, again, look at my other episodes. Silicone is not a membrane. It does not meet the qualifications of a waterproofing membrane to any degree. So that's why silicone is so popular. Now, I'll be transparent. We don't produce silicone. We don't sell silicone. We don't advocate for silicone. And you're going to find out in this podcast why we don't. We don't feel like silicone belongs in the industry as a roof coating. I'll just say that one more time. I do not believe that silicone belongs in the roofing industry as a coating. 
Now, silicone's great for bathtubs, for caulks, for sealants, but think about it. With your bathtub, if you use silicone caulk, how do you re-caulk it? Can you just clean it up and put more on top? You can't, it won't stick. So you have to peel it out completely. So here's the adhesion trap that we talk about with silicone. It can become a repair and maintenance nightmare for clients. And I have seen it countless times over and over again. Nothing adheres to silicone except more silicone of the right type. And this is talking about roof coatings. So once a client or a building owner puts silicone even just around an, a curb, an HVAC curb or pipe penetrations on the roof, now the only way that something can adhere to that is if it's silicone based. And typically only high solid silicone will work. So now you can't just use your typical repair mastic type products, asphalt, polyurethane, rubber, whatever, and, and coat over top of that if the silicone fails. No, you have to use a particular type of product. Um, so silicone has an adhesion issue. Um, so say you coat the entire roof with silicone. It's an industrial facility. You need to change out a mechanical unit. Um, take one out, put a new one in, reflash it into the existing roof. How do you do that with membrane? You can't, nothing's gonna stick to silicone. You can't glue EPDM to it, can't glue PVC to it, can't torch modified to it. You can't even seal it up with like a polyurethane or a PMMA uh, based liquid flashing material because it won't stick, it'll literally peel right off. So once silicone encapsulates and restores an existing roof, you are now tied to silicone for the rest of the life of that roof until you either have to tear the whole roof off or poke a bunch of holes through it to mechanically attach something over top of it. So silicone patches that I've seen complicate future projects and increase costs. Um, I've dealt with countless projects where the client had somebody do a bunch of patches with silicone. Now they're going to do a, a recover either with a liquid membrane or something else. And all of that has to be pre-treated in a special way. So it costs more money long term for them to then go to a full project because they use silicone just as a repair product. So I don't even think silicone is should be used as a repair mastic type product anyway. Again, back to that analogy. You know, would you caulk over old silicone in your bathroom? No, you remove and reapply. So once silicone is on the roof, you're tied to it, you're stuck. The other thing to mention about silicone, the other danger, is literally it's dangerous to walk on when it's wet. So the Iowa State University study that we talked about in another podcast episode, they analyzed all these different nine types of roofing materials commonly used on flat and low slope roofs that people walk across. Silicone, again, very popular. People are coating roofs left and right with silicone. Silicone was the single most dangerous product to walk on when it was wet. Frost, dew, ice, HVAC coolant, snow, whatever it be, if silicone gets wet, it's dangerous. And it gives a false sense of security because it's very rubbery when it's dry. It feels really rubbery. You get that thing wet at all, and it's a safety hazard. Um, slipping and falling, getting hurt, um, so during, after installation, talk to any contractor, anyone that's worked with silicone, they will agree it's very dangerous. The only way to make it not dangerous is to embed granules into it, which now adds costs. It takes away from the property to the product, so you lose your elongation because now you have granules embedded inside of the coating. So it, again, in relying on walkways, it's not going to work. So if they do a roller apply, they put granules in it, one step outside of that with snow when you can't see the walk paths or you know, someone looks at their phone, they take one step, that's when you have that false sense of security and next thing you know, you're injured, somebody's uh, uh, hurt and that's a problem. We want everyone to go home safe at night. So is silicone an acceptable risk from simply a physical and occupational safety standpoint? I don't think so. I don't see a justifiable, justifiable reason to increase the safety hazards of a roof for silicone. There's no benefit that outweighs that safety risk. Again, there's no benefit that outweighs the adhesion issue and the maintenance and repair nightmare it creates. Uh, my next one is the misleading information that it's a membrane, that it's a waterproofing membrane. It's a new roof system. Silicone is often marketed that, that way, but it's not. It's permeable, it's breathable, and it's thin. I never see silicone go on more than 40 dry mills, and typically I'm seeing it more between 20 and 30. That's a sunscreen, that's a paint, the difference is silicone is a ponding water resistant paint versus acrylic. 
That's really the only reason outside of it's easier, sometimes cheaper and faster for a contractor to apply. And the manufacturers will give really long warranties. So put on 30 mils and you get a 20 year warranty. But we can talk about what that warranty actually says, what it actually covers and whether or not you're protected. Again, you don't just get a 20 year warranty and think, oh, I'm good. I don't need to do anything with this roof. It's just going to be leak free, maintenance free for 20 years. That obviously is not the truth. So it is more like a sunscreen. Um, we do not call it a membrane. The other are weak physical properties. Um, I like to have what I call the zipper effect. So a lot of times people think silicone is stronger and more flexible, more durable than acrylic. It's really not. If you look at the technical data sheets, you look at the elongation, the tensile strength, the tear resistance, it's really not any different than an acrylic or an acrylic based roof coating. It's going to have the same sort of flexibility and durability. Now, the physical samples kind of are like, oh, this is rubbery. This feels more flexible. Um, but the thing about silicone is once a little tear starts or a rip or a slit of any sort, it has this zipper effect. Uh, if you take the sample and pull it, it's like tearing apart a piece of cheese. That tear just easily continues throughout the sheet and the coating without any sort of effort. Where other coatings, even acrylic, at least when you start to tear, you have to create force. You have to create um, some sort of uh, uh, a force on those sides to continue that tear. Silicone is not the case. So what we see in real life, a split happens. You get some movement. Buildings move. Roofs move. You get a little split in the silicone coating. Next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. It's zippering and it's cracking and it's splitting all throughout the field of the roof. See it over and over and over again. So again, the weak physical properties, uh, so you look at hail, um, you look at foot traffic, drop tools, building uh, movement. So if you look at the properties here, is this the kind of material that we should have protecting buildings? I don't think so. Another one, real world failures. What we've seen, countless calls, countless emails, texts about failing silicone roofs, often within five years. Um, it looks great brand new. Oh, it's glossy. It's bright white, but it gets really dirty. And now they have less dirt pickup resistant ones. But at the, at the end of the day, silicone gets really dull. It gets really yellow. And some manufacturers say, well, clean it, you know, wash it every year or two. Let's be, let's be feasible. Let's be real. No one's going to pay somebody to come up and pressure wash their roof on a regular basis just to keep it white and maintain it. You shouldn't have to do that when other options are out there. Um, so what are your options if you have silicone on your roof? More silicone, mechanically fastened uh, single ply, you know, screwing, putting a bunch of holes through the roof, uh, or full tear off. Silicone patches may work now, but it's going to be more work and cost later again when there are other options out there to utilize. So building owners often get trapped by these decisions and this misleading that happens, whether it's from a manufacturer, from a contractor, on the belief in silicone, but really you have to think long-term. Okay, what are my options when that silicone starts to not work anymore for me? Or when the building is at a point where I need to do something different. Now your options are limited because you had to use that. Another point here is the environmental impact. Uh, it's a forever material. So another popular thing about silicone is like, it literally doesn't degrade. It does not deteriorate which is true. Silicone is a forever material. It goes to a landfill. It is going to be there for tens of millions of years. So it's not a biodegradable product. So now you have this forever material, but it's not a forever roof. It's not going to last forever. It just isn't. Um, they'll say that it will with some lifetime limited warranties, which we know are a gimmick. Um, so at some point that silicone is going to have to be removed. It's not that biodegradable. It's not environmentally safe. It's not good to be putting in our landfills, but it's going to our landfills in millions and millions of square feet at a time. It's not recyclable. You can't take it and do anything with it. So the lifetime warranties, again, are misleading. The material lasts. The performance doesn't. And is this the kind of legacy we want to leave behind to future generations is having all of this silicone roof coating that's being put on roofs all over the, all over the country? Um, because as you know, uh, in my next segment here, we're not really seeing it in other markets. So the truth, silicone has no place in roofing. Uh, it's a bold statement, but 
I don't believe it should be used as a roof covering or as a repair product. Um, Europe, I'll give Europe as an example, and I, and I reference them a lot, but a lot of times the best roofing technologies we have here in the United States have started in Europe and come here. This is not a technology that started in the US and went to Europe. So silicone coatings for roofing are virtually unheard of in Europe. They're virtually unheard of in other markets like Australia and other places. Why is that? Is it because they don't perform? Is it because they don't meet the testing standards and criteria that they have there? Probably. Uh, so silicone has unrealistic warranties, low cost, and the ease of use. That's driven the popularity. Um, long warranties, low cost, all of that. Um, but the performance doesn't back it up. So with so many better options available, why are we still using silicone? So to close this podcast episode out, silicone is dangerous when it's wet. It's difficult and sometimes impossible to repair. It has weak physical properties. It has misleading warranties. Now, not every manufacturer provides those misleading warranties with silicone, but a lot do. Again, I'm making very broad, uh, generalized statements here to kind of look at this bird's eye view as a whole with silicone. And there are environmental concerns. So silicone may be easy for the roofer, but is it right for the building owner? I'll let you decide. Thanks for listening. Thank you.